Hello there, I'm Narabax. Welcome to uh, Aston Martin, F1 Manager 2022. We're going to be testing out the 1.8 patch with uh, Aston Martin here. They uh, skipped 1.7, went straight to 1.8. And in general, in that patch, the uh, big thing they changed was how tyre degradation works on performance, uh, back market behaviour, uh, some design changes, which I, so far, believe to be purely on the AI side. And they did some changes to fuel and fuel delta, so we'll have to see how all that plays out. But in general, what we're interested in is generally the changes to the sign and, of course, the tyres. Now, with Aston Martin, we're expected to, uh, you know, finish 8th. And long term, we're expected to be a uh, points contender. In terms of our current team, we have the ninth uh, best car, the 7th best drivers, the shittiest staff, and uh, fairly decent headquarters in... Uh, in fifth. Our employees are our drivers are Vettel and Stroll. Stroll is probably going to get changed out for, I believe, Alonso, probably. Fairly, uh, fairly early on. Making us have a, well, an old guard kind of save, which could be fun. Hulkenberg, I don't know if we're going to change him out this season. The first one or the next, we'll have to see. But uh, we'll also have to see on the stats of our team here if we want to switch them out early also. Judging by, uh, well... The fact that we're ranked 10 in stop quality. Biography here. The Aston Martin team is fairly new. I believe they've only been here for five seasons. So uh, as we'll have to see if we can make something out of it. Let's get into the game. Here we are. We're back in the game. And we're straight away going to start making some uh, some moves here. So we start with a lot of money as Aston. 31 point, uh, basically 8 million. And the first thing we're going to do is what you should always do first. Basically upgrade your design center. The more designs you can run, the better for you. So let's get that upgraded. 11.5 million. I have no problems putting that money down. And the second thing we're going to do is start developing our car. We want to try and get our car to be the best as soon as possible. And of course, that might be a bit of a challenge, but I think we'll uh, I think we'll make it work here. The first thing we're going to do is what we usually do, the underfloor. And as you can see here, we actually have... Uh, Compared to the current fit on the floor, four and a well four percent expertise boost already, so that is good to see. I mean that we should get a good one, and I'm thinking that we will just put in everything we have here into this uh, into this underfloor. I don't know if we're gonna make another one this season. We probably will just to boost expertise, but for now we are gonna be doing this. It's probably gonna stick with us for a long time, but as you can see here, even. Even if we put everything to maximum, the negatives do not amount for to a lot, really. It's 0 0.6 times 3, 1.8, plus 0 0.9, which means uh, minus 2.7. So we still have a 3% net gain there. We have, a, well, again, 3% net gain here, and 3% here, 3% here. Sorry, we have actually less here, but uh, it's still a gain. Don't get me wrong. So I think the strategy is still just maximize everything. If you have attributes you do not particularly need for your car, it's okay to forgo them to boost the others. But as a general rule, it seems like every slider to the right, the focus is still worth it. They might have nerfed it a little bit. I'm actually a bit, a little bit uncertain here because I don't see too many changes. In terms of time, it's about the same. Well, actually, it should be exactly the same. So... I don't know what they've done here, but I have a feeling they may be, because if I read the patch notes here, further adjustments to car part development focus and attribute trade-ups to help balance player progress progress versus the other teams. So it might sound good, but due to seeing very few changes here, what I'm expecting here to actually have happened is that the AI can now use focuses. So for those of you who don't know, in the previous patch, the AI, when they developed the car, would keep every focus in the middle, they would never focus anything. But if they're now allowed to use focuses, we can expect to see them progress faster and thus be, you know, a threat in line with the with the player. They'll be just as quick. And, uh, well, potentially that could be a problem, but it could also be good for us. So we're going to go intense design, all sliders right on the floor. And the second piece I'm thinking we do here is probably the front wing. We're lacking a lot of turning. Of course, rear wing would be nice. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I think front wing is probably best. We could also try and focus on these smaller pieces just in the beginning here. Because they are, again, 
that just balance piece so you get virtually out of the out of the cooker they'll not be very good but our goal this season isn't to win our goal this season is to create a car that gives us a fighting chance next season so what i'm thinking is we go for the front wing everything right except cooling and it's come to my attention that cooling might not be as useful as i, as I thought but from my experience playing this game your cooling stat doesn't matter too much remember during our williams run there is nothing on cooling as far as i can see in the patch notes if there is i have missed it and i apologize probably there's nothing there so cooling might help with lockups help with accidents to some degree but i don't think it has that much of an effect it's the same thing with smoothness um in the williams run now in 1.8 we did over a 40 60 percent usage stint basically bring the tower down from 100% to 40%. The difference in stats between Piastri and Pocher in that save amounted to basically two extra laps that Piastri would easily make up just to being having better pace stats. So smoothness is one thing that is kind of useless. It's nice to have, don't get me wrong, but it's so little value that I feel it's better to just not invest into it, invest into other parts. And that's basically the same here with the car. We don't want to invest in smoothness. We want to invest in the pace stats. And that is my, well, philosophy here. If it works or not, we'll have to see. But that is basically how I'm thinking if you uh, if you want to, you know, know my reasoning. So we're going to pay some money here. And we still have actually a decent amount left. So both of these will take a couple of months to finish. And in terms of the facility, well, in terms of getting uh, the design center here upgraded, that's going to take even longer, as you can see. But what I'm thinking is that we go ahead and switch out probably Hulk Hulkenberg. Get a talent in that we can improve later on. And it's going to cost us 4.3 million. I feel like it's worth it to be able to raise a talent right now. Because if we do pick up a loan, so we pick a battle. We have no idea when either of them might decide to retire. They are both uh, old drivers. Some of the oldest, I believe. Uh, Hulkenberg, too, for that matter. But yeah, it's uh, top five oldest drivers alongside uh, Hamilton, Kubica, and, uh, well, Paris, too. So what I'm thinking is we do try and poach Alonso. We're just going to do standard scouting. And we're probably also going to do something about our, well, other things, the staff. But I think we will switch out Hulkenberg. We'll probably push Cher. Push is just that good of a talent. And honestly, if you look look here, Hauger is one that is getting close to him. So we could potentially test him out just for do something different this season, which actually we might do. Test out Hauger, get something uh, a little bit different going. Boucher is a great talent. You would be very happy to have him, don't get me wrong. Duan is also great, and Piastri is also great. But again, these are drivers we know. So I'm thinking we might just do that. We might just pick up Hauger here instead and we'll give him an opportunity to be reserved we'll see how that goes and basically we'll try and do something a little bit different for uh, well for fun really so we're gonna pay a decent amount of money for this don't get me wrong but uh currently we are in a position where we can do this oh we did not like the length of the contract but he will accept it so it'll cost us as you can see 4.3 million for hulkenberg 400,000 for his current contract and a 50,000 starting bonus so we are gonna we're gonna hire him i feel like it's an okay deal with that we made our first move now we are gonna try and figure out what currently alonso is being paid that's why i'm doing the standard scouting we will not be able to sign him for bahrain that's just how things are it will not happen and uh, other than that do we have anything else we need to go through before we get to the first race probably our staff our technical chief and header aerodynamics are both bad. And our technical chief only has one year left on his contract. But the aerodynamics chief here has a lot more. It's still going to cost us money to break said contract. But what we do is either we break them now. Or we wait. The race engineers are both decent. So we're going to keep them. They're actually pretty good, all things considered. But uh, if we scout for a technical chief here. You can see here in terms of overall rating. We can get Cyril here. Cyril Clement. I think I've seen this guy before. Um, 
78 though, he's just five below. And he's young, so he can potentially stay for a while. I think we're gonna... Uh... Honestly, I don't know what he would like as a contract, but let's see if we can uh, make something work here. Five, con five seasons. Our current... The uh, man here is probably paid, I don't know, 2 million maybe? I don't think that will be enough, but we can always try. We'll also give him a decent starting bonus. Let's see how he feels about this one. Very high patience, so we can do a couple of testing, testing the woods here. Not high enough. Okay, we're going to try and give you 2.5. Okay, 2.6. Let's see how we feel about this. Okay, so I made up overpaid here for him, but we'll get him here. And we can live with that. It's uh, something I should have done that I should have picked him up, though, before deciding the pass. So that's on me. Uh, it's a bad habit of mine. He sucks at suspension, which is actually perfectly fine. We want him to have high front wing, rear wing, and underfloor. So this is actually not, these are actually not the worst stats he could have had, all things considered. And we are probably going to end up making more underfloors. But yeah, I should have hired, hired him before making the underfloor. And I should have done the same for the head of aerodynamics. Now, the free agent is 76. Um, but I'm thinking we wait a bit here. And we try and snatch one that is higher leveled. Potentially. Because we have four years on the current contract. It's going to be more expensive to breach. And, uh, well, we are spending a lot of money, so, but still, the, the stats aren't good. Um, I see, what aerodynamics chief is willing to get to us? Dr. Bear, we could actually pick him up again. And honestly, I think we just do. It's, uh, it's a good, it's a good move, really. Let's, uh, see if we can poach him, which is going to be probably very expensive. Uh, let's go for 2.8 maybe, 200,000 signing, 5 seasons, and again, we can switch out these guys later on, but for now, it's perfectly okay to just, uh, do it like this, I feel, and hopefully we can afford him, oh, he was not happy with the money, let's try 3.2 maybe, Oh, you were getting there. 3.4. We'll probably have two, three more tries, maybe. There we are. And it'll cost us basically all of our money to do this. So, uh, I'll also we'll have to wait a little bit. But I'm thinking upgrading these, doing these upgrades when we have this amount of money is potentially a good thing. But again, and we aren't looking to compete this season. Switching out our... You know what? We're going to cancel this. It's just too much money. We're going to try and see if we can get someone else at the start of next season. And uh, it might be Dirk the Bear. But we're not looking to compete this season. And I kind of forget that. I'm a little bit still in William's mindset. Apologies for that. But I think we're set now. The technical chief here should be okay. Hopefully we can uh, make him grow. 1,500 points. And... Uh, well, I might need to get the team hub up and running. But for now, we'll try and set up some money so we can get the design team, design building up and running more efficiently. And we have here, welcome to the team. Good. Let's continue then. See where we stand. Car development, uh, welcoming Cyril, welcoming Hauger. Very good. Obligations, though. I forgot about this. Okay, so this sucks quite a bit. Not the greatest here. I believe these are random, actually, so we didn't roll good here on the dice. Race day factory event. Didn't roll good on the dice here either, really. Every race. Uh, battle. Medium appearances. Guess this is a decent roll. Battle already has low, so it won't grow too much. But both drivers, that's going to be a bit annoying, especially control performance rating. We'll have to see what we do about that, but we can't really do anything. We'll just have to live with it. We'll approve of the party request, and then we'll continue to, uh, well, start of uh, the season, if you will. And as you can see, our car is pretty bad. 15th is the highest we can get in uh, low-speed cornering, but other than that, our car is backmarker worthy. Let's just say it like that. 
Alonso scouting complete. Um, pretty decent stats. I'm very happy that Smoothness is among his lowest. Adaptability is the lowest. But uh, did we get his contract? No. Okay, we'll have to do a detailed scouting then. I was I was expecting the standard scouting to give like contract information and then detail to figure out his stats. I didn't know it was that way around. <laughs> That's a bit funny to me. Now I'm a bit unsure if we want to include races here for this series, well first season, because we're basically gonna be back markers, at least for the first half of the season. Uh but we'll consider that as we go. We'll not guarantee any of these because we can't. We need to reliably finish above 15th if we want to do that. So uh, with that said, let's go to Bahrain here and see how the first season goes. Again, I'll probably have the, both versions up in time here, probably either late tonight or tomorrow. But uh, I'll try and get both parts up and then you can see how we do as back markers. I'll be, uh, I'll be back after the race. We have just finished our first race. As you can see, Vettel managed to get up to 12th. Thanks to, for well, one part, a safety car, which helped launch the field back up, but uh, also the fact that all the AI ran softs that were below 30% and thus suffered for that. But yeah, a really good race for us. Stroll had a bit of a uh, running wide and he couldn't catch up to the rest of the field, sadly. But uh, we had a battle in a good DRS train here and he managed to get to the top of it before the end of the race. So I'd say that's a fairly good result. For the other teams here, Red Bull, Ferrari, Red Bull, <laughs> Ferrari... There where you expect him to be. Mercedes had a worse one with 15 8 though. Not good for them. And McLaren, two cars on the points. Interestingly enough, Alpha 7th with uh, Bottas, and we have Gasly rounding out the points for Alpha Tauri. So uh, that's a bit of an interesting one. Leclerc had faster slap. Constructors, Red Bull and Ferrari now have a pretty decent advantage over Mercedes in the long run. But McLaren in fourth is also a bit of a surprise. So. Uh, We'll see how this season goes. Could be very interesting. As you can see, neither Stroll nor Battle have the best uh, growth potential. And neither does Hauge, sadly, because I believe Behrman had uh, a better one in our save. But uh, it's still not completely bad. It's still okay. But uh, having a higher one would benefit. But yeah, uh, we'll have to see how the stats distribution goes for both battle and stroll have some money we make the what we're expected to make 3.8 million and with that we can uh, continue here so the uh the board is very happy with our 12th which uh shouldn't be that surprising i believe don't know where we are right now we are currently eight with that uh 12 position finish so uh yeah we'll have to see how we do we have another race weekend in four days in Saudi Arabia. We're not going to get any upgrades done, so we're just going to go. And yeah, we do have an, one upgrade, actually. We started the game with, as most most teams do, a suspension upgrade here. But I don't feel like making spending money to put it on the car, because it's super, super minor. As you can see, it doesn't really do too much of anything. 0.02% in cornering. 38 cornering and 0.01 kph again it does something but it doesn't do enough to warrant making more than we already have i'll do that later now we are going to go to jeddah i'm going to see how it goes uh goes here i think we're going to go back to just showing the races and if you find them interesting you can watch them uh the races part of the season will be in six parts with preseason ad included as an added and uh, we'll do the same second split pass. We'll maybe do something different in the future. We'll have to see because I have been getting requests for shorter videos. But uh, yeah, I'll have to consider how I do this. But for now, we'll try and get through one season here today. Second race just finished, Saudi Arabia. As you can see, Ferrari 1-2, Red Bull 3-4 and a surprising Alfa Romeo 5-6. Mercedes had a bad race. Hamilton crashed out, Russell in 7th, Alfa Tauri and Alpine finish out the points. And we did 15th and 16th. I had a bad um, call and strategy for Vettel, sadly. But he uh, he still did okay, even with that uh, mess up from me. First driver's championship, a lot of changes here, but the uh, most important one, Leclerc up to first. And there's just one point between the top three. 
so that could get interesting. Um, Constructors, Ferrari up top, Red Bull second, Alfa Romeo third. I haven't seen that before. And uh, yeah, not really a lot of changes there. Haas move up past us here with that last race, which is what we like to see, but nothing we can do about it. Personal development, again, Hauge is really the only one we care about here. Vettel getting points is great, but not something we expect with his low uh, low growth expectations here. 3.8 million from sponsors is, again, in line with uh, expectations, and it's what we're going to be getting for the foreseeable future. Uh, the, uh, the board is not happy with that race, so uh, we might get in trouble here. They're, jet, they're, satisfied, they're satisfied, but not happy. So, uh, again, could be in trouble, could not be not. We don't know yet. Board confidence check-in. Good result in the board review. Financial report. Again, I think we're too concerned about money. The projected balance is, you know, going through the roof. So we'll be spending a lot on parts. Car development report. We haven't actually done any development yet. So this one is moot. Well, we could see how the other teams are doing. Suspension, we don't care about, but the chassis, we kind of want to have an extra of, simply because both cars use it. Suspension is a one-off. If it gets destroyed, I'll just put him back on the old one, really. So uh, I'm perfectly happy with that. Uh, let's have a quick look at race preview Australia. Performance targets, we're not going to do any of these, honestly, because... Uh, we didn't qualify 15th or high last time. What is this? Is this bugged? Okay, that's a bit concerning. Um, but yeah, we're going to continue and go to Australia. <laughs> For sure. Red Bull Ferrari is still at the top. Mercedes now getting a proper third. Well, third team-wise per goal here. Alpine fourth. And Alfa Romeo out of the points, sadly. McLaren, Alfa Tauri, the runner-ups, if you will. And we had a... A bad race, really. That's the best way I can describe this one. We should have gone for the one-stopper. In terms of uh, the Drivers' Championship here, Lewis Hamilton moves up. Yeah, gets some more points. Oco moves up. Alonso moves up. And Constructors-wise, let's say this is now back up to third. Alfa Romeo got uh, taken down a peg. Alpine moves up. And, uh, yeah, that's really it. Development point for Stroll. Good. And we make uh, what we're used to making. First race, we, uh, well, braking performance could be improved. Full line Stroll. We had a difficult race. Post-race overview. Chassis has been manufactured. Good. We have development points for Hauge, which we'll put into reactions because we need to get those pace stats up. That would be our main focus here, really. Pace stats is key. And uh, regulation vote for minor technical changes here to low speed wing changes or high speed wing changes. So it's just for the wings, really, which actually could benefit us, but it could also be kind of a negative. Uh, let's go for low speed, I guess. It should still work. It's the thing that should actually have the most effect. Put it that way. Suspension low stock, we don't care. Again, it's the one that we have one of that we were given for free. Alonso has scouting completed. He has eight months left. He gets paid five million a uh, season. And with this, we could potentially propose a contract with him. So, do we want to switch our stroll for Alonso now? Or do we want to tr try and do it at the end of the season? Honestly... We could do it now. And have a proper, like, old guard run. Performance, uh, in terms of performance, we should probably do a lot better than Stroll. So, I'm thinking that we just go full on old guard here. We get Alonso, as I said we would. And we'll see if we can keep this team going. We're going to up his value a little bit. We're going to put him in the second car. And we're going to try three seasons. I don't know how many seasons he would one let's go with four and we're gonna give him 600 for just signing with us let's see how he feels about this 
Well, if, if he starts falling off quite rapidly, we might have to... This is too long, I'm considering retiring. That's, uh... That's a bit worrisome. Let's try three seasons, see how he feels about that. He was happy with everything else except the race target bonus. Okay, so race target bonus is something he would need. The problem is that the way that this bonus works right now is actually bugged. So if you give this out, potentially it could... Uh... Well, it's a visual bug. I haven't actually seen if it's a actual bug. But it's uh, giving, you, giving you money as a visual one. But I haven't checked if it's actual factual. That's why I don't want to give it out. Um, let's pay 300,000 extra a year. See how he feels about that. If that's enough to, you know, get him going. If not, we're just going to have to get him for two seasons. And then prolong it from there. He accepted that. So we'll hire him. Replace him for Stroll. So uh, we now have our old guard up and running. Which is great. Let's continue. Research period has opened, as you can see. So if we really wanted to do, we could research the car. But uh, we do also have a decent amount of money. So uh, we'll consider how we want to do things. I'm a bit unsure myself. Again, it's the thing that we didn't vote for that got passed, which is okay. High speed wing changes, which means that the high speed takes the biggest hit. Medium speed takes the same 20%. And low speed takes 10% as long with the DRS Delta. Expertise drop this would be. Race prep failed melee or magna. We're gonna not go for any targets there. We still have a bit too weak of a car. And again, I'm gonna have to see how the intense works in terms of gaining expertise. If it's lackluster compared to before, we'll probably go turn our heads to research. But uh, if it's not, we'll probably be doing a lot of designing just to get more expertise. And we'll probably do something to alleviate the drop that we're getting. But other than that, we might just end up skipping research altogether. Let's go to Emilia Romagna. Here we are, the end of uh, the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. We ended up 17-18th, not a great result by us by any means. Split strategies didn't really work out either. Alonso had a decent start on the softs though, I'll say that, but he started falling off pretty early. We do need to get those upgrades on a car if we want to try and get, you know, on anything better than back marker really. 1-2 for Ferrari, 3-4 for Red Bull, 5-6 for Mercedes, 7 for Bottas, and Alpha, which is basically what we expect to see based on car performance. Avatari and McLaren, 8-9, and then we have Show for Alpha finishing out the points. Drivers here, Lewis moves up 1, Gasly moves up 3, Norris 1. So not a lot of changes, none in the top 5. Constructors, we have no changes. Mercedes is being slowly left behind here actually, so... Uh... That should be kind of a concern for them. Development-wise, as you can see, our drivers have basically reached their peaks. They're not going to get much better. Hauge is basically going to be the only one we focus on. Money, basic payout, which is what we, uh, what we are happy with at this point. And let's have a quick look here. We have the front wing done in a few days. So let's get on, uh, let's get on with this. Let us continue. We have a couple of designs coming up, I believe, at least one design. We have the ATR period. And with that, we can start having a look into research and see how the sliders currently affect gain in terms of, uh, well, in terms of expertise. As you see, we had a warning there for suspension. Again, it's not something we need to be concerned with. Board confidence, uh, good result. Good to see. Financial report, it's not a concern. We have a lot of money. We are falling behind, I believe, a little bit maybe. But we're still good. In terms of stats, we'll get better once we get our front wing. Here manufactured and of course the underfloor. So we are going to be manufacturing six of these. It's going to cost us money. But uh, we'll be using those front wings. So it doesn't actually matter too much. We also have a new ATR period here. Which I'm thinking we probably put into the... Rear wing. We might do another underfloor. I'm thinking we do a rear wing before that, probably. So, in terms of our current projects, we can start a new one in terms of research. So let's have a quick look here and see just how the sliders would, you know, have an effect here. Currently, as you can see, we would gain about 3% across the board if we did this. Uh, well, research wise, because we are lacking a little bit. We're actually lacking a lot. If you want to look at it that way. So, 
again, I'm thinking we do a little bit here. Just to gain enough to have a decent car next season. And again, what we could do here is just go fully into research. We could do this, which would be a tremendous boost, really, for next season. And it would probably be cheaper to do this than, say, do anything else. If we look at the sliders, currently we have everything at about... I uh, Well, let's go through it. 10% basically here. Almost 10% here. 12% on medium. 13% uh, on... Uh, high speed then again that is mostly due to the fact that we are losing the expertise here so we need to regain it and on delta 11.5 again we lost a little bit there 11 percent here and if we put all of them to maximum let's see how that number changes like so so we have 11.3 now here we gain about 1.3 percent i believe we gained one and a half percent here a little bit more here Another percent here. So it's a small gain compared to... It probably is nerfed a little bit. But it's still worth it to go all the way right. At least for research. I dare say. And... Uh, as you can see, this boost from a rear wing would be quite good. So basically the question that I'm going to have to ask myself here is... Do we completely toss this season out the, out the window? focus on research for next season and we might actually end up doing that because it would be very beneficial to us but I'm actually kind of uncertain here so uh, let's try and see where we end up in terms of car performance I think research is probably the play but the question then is do we want to do underfloor maybe instead well, we have already an underfloor sign uh, sorry a design project we could have one research project, one design project going at the same time. We also made a front wing if we were to put in our CFD and wind tunnel hours. We could also get a decent boost here. But I'm also thinking, the second reason why I'm thinking we do research is so that we don't do what we did in our Williams game. In our previous Williams game, we focused on design. And it worked out really well for us. We actually managed fourth in the constructors. Now, there's been a couple of nerfs to design since then. Well, nerfs in the patch notes, at least. And what I'm thinking is, if we go full research from this point forwards, I think, I'm think thinking we still should be able to get 8 with that underfloor. If not, we can do some more designs later. But if we go full research, could we potentially do something funny, fun for next season? Because the way that I'm thinking things is that if we manage to, even if we manage to get last, I don't think the board would kick us out. That's what I'm hoping for, at least. So what I'm thinking is we go full research. We retain for next season two our CFD and winter hours, so we have a lot of them. And that will allow us to propel our car forwards easier. You could say it's cheesy. I wouldn't honestly not blame you if you did. But I'm thinking that we do that. And in terms of ATR and what we want to invest in, I think that we do one ATR on each of these three. So with that, let's start with the ribbing here. We're going to put in the hours. And we're going to go, again, sliders fully to the right. As you can see, we gain a lot more expertise here from using the CFD hours. So they are very, very valuable in that regard. And that is why if you are a team that's struggling, of course, having these buffs into your part itself is really nice. But as you can see, yeah, without anything, 3%. And if we go fully in, we would get up to, as you can see, 10% across the board. And then we can boost that to 11. So even if we have a 40% base, that is still a 25% increase in expertise. So uh, I'd say that is a fairly decent investment for next season. And what we could do here, really simply, is actually invest the... Uh, aerodynamic hours into research and if we want to we can invest in some of the smaller parts too but yeah as you can see this would give quite a significant boost for next season's car and i'm thinking that we do it because of that because of that next season and because i'm going to be cheesy here we will want to limit how well we do this season so we'll split our slots here we'll do a little bit of focus into research and we'll do a little bit of focus into designing and we will split our 
progress, if you will. Ready for the Miami Grand Prix? Again, I just want to say again, it seems like the the best way to handle the sliders at the current moment seems to be once again going all the way right. It seems to have nerfed, been nerfed a little bit because the penalties for going right seems to be a little bit bigger. But I don't see a huge balance change that makes it so that tuning something down on purpose is worth it. In terms of cooling, I have been browsing the Reddit. I've been looking for other opinions to try and figure out what it actually does. Because we haven't seen any, you know, huge problems. Brakes, again, people, the belief is that it has to do with locking up. But, uh, again, it's one of those, it's one. It's the Spooners versus Pace argument again. You might look up, but if you if you mess up five out of twenty races due to looking up, would you rather be able to fight for points and remaining remaining fifteen? Would you like to struggle in all twenty of your races instead? Is what the way I look at it. So, locking up is a risk that I'm willing to take with cooling. Now, engine cooling, on the other hand, could be a little bit more interesting because the theory there is that it both has an effect on engine wear. Lower cooling there might mean more engine wear, which is hard to measure. But considering that we, in our first season as Williams, well, our second season too, didn't really focus too much on cooling, and still got through that season without getting an extra engine, says at least a little bit. But uh, again, the other thing that engine cooling might do is help cool down fuel, and make your engines use less of it. And that is an interesting point. So I think we're going to be testing cooling in the Williams save mostly. And in this save we might disregard it a little bit. But uh, we'll probably get back to it in Season 2 or Season 3. But yeah, let's go to Miami. Sorry about my little rant here. But again, the design changes are mainly, I think, centered around how the AI designed their cars. And an attempt to prevent the player from just running away with it, really. That's the way I look at it. But yeah, I'm done ranting. Let's go to Miami. Miami Grand Prix just over. Ferrari 1-2, Red Bull 3-4, Mercedes 5-8, Alfa Romeo 6th, and then we finish the points with uh, Alfa Tauri and McLaren, and of course ourselves. Well, this race was kind of an interesting one. We had a red flag on turn 1, two cars out, three other cars with penalties, and that propelled Alonso up from 18th, I believe, to 11th on the restart. And after that, he uh, he hung on, and he did a really good job here. He managed to get up to 7, scoring 6 points for us, which is uh, honestly quite insane. I see Straw has been picked up by Alpine, that we actually did switch drivers. It's a shame I didn't realize that before now, honestly. But yeah, Vettel unluckily hit a wall. He was, didn't, uh, he was also on... He could have potentially also scored points. That's the thing here. Which is nuts to me. But yeah, Driver Championship signs up to 12th, uh, sorry, 12th, 2nd. Pass Verstappen. We have Alonso up into 9th here. He has 10 points. He scored 4, remember, with Alpine before we uh, eyed him. And with that, we are currently 8th in the Constructors. Afatari moves up to 6th. And in all honesty, as I was talking about uh, with the research, I think this is where we want to finish the first season. We can probably get up here. But remember, this is without a single upgrade uh, actually, you know, gotten on the car yet. The upgraded suspension, the minor upgrade, is actually on Battle's car. But yeah, development uh, looks like you'd expect. Not great, not terrible. And we made actually extra money from the performance setups. This is broken, because I was not supposed to get this. We haven't qualified 15 better at all. So, uh, I don't feel good about receiving that money. But yeah, as you can see, our front wings are being manufactured. We had, we exceeded expectations by gaining points. And, uh, pretty good result altogether. Again, the suspension is low. We don't care about that because if it's get broken, we'll just get a new one. Spanish Grand Prix is next. We have an up and coming driver here in Berman. <clears throat> We actually do have an interest in. Performance targets, we're not going to set any. I still don't think we are stable enough to get any. Because, again, 
we haven't put any upgrades on our car. We're actually going to put the first one on just now, which is the front wing. So let's go to the warehouse, go to the front wing. We're going to slap this on the car. It's going to be an upgrade to turning, of course, but it's still not going to be great. And we can do a quick analysis now and see how we're looking. I should have actually done that before we started, but uh, we're still not looking great. They didn't give us too much of a boost because we start our starting point is so low. But as you can see, even with that new front wing, we're still either the worst, the second worst, or fourth worst team on the grid. And we managed to get points, which is amazing. As beats us at beats us at every aspect. Uh, Alpha Tauri beats us at every aspect. And I believe McLaren 2 beats us in every aspect but one. So we did really, really good. And again, it's mostly due to that, that red flag. I'm not going to even imagine anything else. Let's get breaking up for battle. Again, the focus that we're going to be doing is pace stats. It's just that valuable. Let's get on with the Spanish Grand Prix. Spanish Grand Prix has just ended and we have once again scored points. Fernando here managed to get 9th. Vettel wasn't as lucky though. But uh, we basically started the same 15-16. Vettel lost out a little bit. I mostly focus on Alonso, so it's also a bit my fault. Those are the results. Ferrari 1-3, Red Bull 2-5, Mercedes 4-7. And then we have Alpha Tauri, Alpha Romeo and Alpine. In the other scoring positions. So generally, decent performance from the... Uh, Top three teams, as you'd guess. In terms of the drivers' championship here, Ferrari is firmly in the lead. Red Bull second, Mercedes uh, well third, if you want to look at it like that. Order seven, Gas the eight, and we only have Hamilton moving up. They'll have a good uh, showing here for Alonso, still in ninth. And constructors, the only change is Alpha Tauri is moving ahead of McLaren, but yeah, Ferrari is taking a grip on this. Almost sixty points ahead now of Red Bull, and Red Bull almost a hundred points ahead of Mercedes and then once again up for a male 40 points again well a little more than 40 points 45 behind Mercedes so we have kind of a pecking order here we'll have to see how it goes we don't really want to score many more points though the goal of this season is to get eight good result here and as you can see I'll also had a uh, Another good race, which <laughs> resulted in a lot of development points, but sadly he doesn't have a lot of growth potential, so uh, doesn't get as much. But he does have really good stats, I have to admit. 3.8 million, and we should probably consider some performance bonuses, seeing that, well, we've had two rather good races, all things considered, and we're also getting Underfloor coming up here. I don't think we're going to pick it up for the... Uh, for the Monaco Grand Prix, which is in four days, I think we're just going to suffer through it. Not really much else we can do. We also have our front wings now manufactured, which is good. And we'll have the uh, Monaco Grand Prix now up in uh, just a second, as long with the underfloor design that has been completed. And what I'm thinking is, I don't know what I want to do now in terms of development. We could develop our parts further. Make a new underfloor now, as you can see. The expertise boost has actually been kind of ridiculous. Almost 15% here. 15% here, same here. This is actually about almost 20%. And a bit more here. But then again, we had 4%, I believe, to go from. But it's still 15% boost to the underfloor. And as you can imagine, if we make another one here, it's still going to be... A fairly good boost so what we really could do if we want to be trying to be competitive this season is we make this underfloor but we make it brushed we're gonna get it out quicker of course we we'll slap in the five engineers we'll have it done in 54 days and we'd be able to have a competitive season if we really wanted to because of the pretty insane expertise boost here now if we go into the research screen and have a look at the same thing in terms of the underfloor you can see that the expertise currently isn't that isn't as high did i misread it no i didn't it's still 56 there i just remembered the numbers from yeah the uh expertise here is getting there it's gone pretty 
really high here. 60%, well, 56% on this, 60% on low. Three downfalls, remember, you take this number, split it by two, and then you'll get your percentage point. Here too, we have, well, we're a little bit lower here, two and a half percent. But uh, here, 54%, and of course, 52% here. So we still have something we could gain. Now, we could also do a research focus here, like so. What we could do, if we really want to be cheeky before next season, is do another one on intense. Because as you can see, we gained about 10 to 15% in everything, compared to the 4% we're getting here. Of course, we're getting less due to the increased gain. But what we could do is make an underfloor budget test to see if the... Because currently, it doesn't seem like they changed intense at all. Which means that the design strategy stays the same. Slap everything to the right. Do intense design. And then... You know, see how it looks. So what I'm going to do here is take a screenshot so I remember where we stand. And I think we are going to design another intense underfloor. Just to see where it stands in terms of the expertise gain. It's sign of that we do research. Again, it's a bit of a... It's a bit of a hard one, honestly. Because currently we are at a stage where the intense gain is just so high that it would outdo anything else really. What we could do, of course, is start working on, say, chassis and everything else here. Get a little bit of uh, performance from that. But as you can see, if we just do a basic underfloor here, there's still a lot more sats than anything else. Getting the underfloor up is the number one thing you can do for your car, really. Doing this alone is, again, more than 1% here. Decent gains here, 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 everywhere. And it takes longer, of course, but you still gain more than you would from doing three suspensions, for instance, I think. And that is the important part to keep in consideration. So we are losing stats by maximizing everything, of course. But even if we did this, we'd still gain cooling. So uh, I'm a little bit uncertain what we want to do. I think still focusing underfloor is probably the right call. But uh, we should probably also do rear wing, sorry, front wing rear wings, that sort of thing. But the question is, do we do research or do we do design? I'm a little bit undecided, as you might guess. But uh, I am very tempted to do another underfloor, just to see what it would do. Now, thing is, I'm thinking we do something like the suspension here, just to be a bit cheeky. It's the quickest design. We design a, a suspension. And the reason why I'm saying that we design a suspension is actually fairly simple and straightforward. Again, we could do this. Or we'll try and keep cooling the same to potentially avoid accidents. And the gain from this, doing this, isn't that much or that little. So we might as well just do a little bit into, well, the cooling too. Sorry, this one. But I'm thinking that we will once again try and see brake cooling. We'll see if we suffer a lot of accidents, we can always just tune it up. We'll use this first season as a testing ground and we'll try and maximize performance besides cooling and see if we suffer or not. So I'm going to design a, again, a suspension here. It's going to take a month and we're going to design it with intense. And we're going to be doing this for two reasons. We want to get that underfloor made, but it's going to take time. I do not want to rush the underfloor. It would be nice to do. But it's not something we really are going to do, if that makes sense. So we have Monaco now in, well, today. And calendar-wise, we'll have no races next week. So we should be able to get the underfloor made before, you know, the next race weekend. Um, the other reason why I wanted to get the underfloor designed before we make a new one is I want to see how much of a difference the new one would have to the old one. And... Uh, well, that is the main concern here. Now, we do have a decent amount of money. We have a design center coming down in three days. So what I am thinking is we might as well start upgrading some of the other things, like the wind tunnel and the CFD simulator. As you can see, CFD simulator has an extra stat compared to the others. It's airflow sensitivity. So personally, I prefer to upgrade the CFD simulator first. And we're going to do that. We should still have enough money to upgrade the design center. I can't remember how much is for, for the fourth level. But it should be... We should have enough. I'm thinking since we are focusing on... 
you know, that's also one of the reasons why I want to focus on research. It costs less, it allows to invest into our facilities and generally have a good time. And I would like to actually do some of these, but we aren't going to do them here in Monaco. Again, I'm very sorry that it's so much back and forth, but uh, with the new patch, I want to test things out. I'm uncertain what part I want to go. And honestly, I probably should have just gone uh, two saves here. Say that we do one Aston game where we go full on design and do one McLaren game where we focus research, for instance, something like that. That's probably what I should have done, but uh, I didn't. So I'm a little bit undecided now. Again, I'm thinking of trying to stream probably on the weekends, but uh, for now, this is how we're going to do things. We're going to see how the design looks on the currently made underfloor, and then we'll make a decision from there. Now, with that in mind, let's get on with the uh, with the race. Monaco Grand Prix just finished, and as you can see, we had our best driver 12th, so Battle 18th. Basically what you kind of expected here. Alonso up one, Battle at the, the position is started. But then again, we didn't put too much effort in here due to, uh, well, Monaco being as uh, difficult to deal with as, as it is, really. Now, it seems like Pierre Gasly actually tried to get fastest lap here, which is kind of interesting for, well, for the AI. But we had a Ferrari 1-4, Leclerc winning his home race, Red Bull 2-3. Mercedes 5-6, Alfa Romeo 7-9, Alpine and McLaren finishing out the points, so uh, basically kind of what you'd expect, to be honest. Drivers' Championship with Ocko moving up to Shed 9th, really, with uh, Alonso. And in Constructors, we have Alpine moving past McLaren. Nothing happening during development. Again, about 4 million gained from, well, 3.8 in from race. And we have our design center now finished. We're going to up cornering here for Alonso. And as you can see here, in terms of pace stats, Alonso has fairly good ones. And Vettel is sadly a little bit lacking compared to, uh, to Alonso and, well, purely in the pace stat department. We also have some points here for Hauke, and he's severely lacking in the pace department, so uh, we'll have to see if we actually keep him around or not, but for now it should be okay. We have the sign setter upgraded, which is what we were aiming for. We're going to straight up upgrade it again, and hopefully, for the end of the season, we'll be able to upgrade it to, uh, well, its final level, but again, 105 days, which would be basically four months from now, June, July, August, September. And uh, it's going to be difficult to reach max level before next season. It's basically going to be impossible. We'll be one, two, maybe even Bahrain into next season before it's uh, maximized. We'll have to consider that if we want to use some extra funds here on upgrading the wind tunnel. I think we probably will. We'll be focusing those. Staff facilities, again, team hub race sims. These are nice to get, but not vital right now for us. I'm prioritizing the car rather than that. Helipad could be something we'll start to upgrade now, as we seem to be getting into a position where we can, well, score some of these. So we're going to get the helipad up and running. The rest of these are not something that we really need right now, again, I feel, so uh, we're not going to be focusing them. What is happening with our race, and before the next race in 11 days in Baku, we should have our underfloor. We should make our car a bit more competitive, if you will. So, uh, let us first kidnap a, uh, we're going to kidnap an engineer here, like so. And what I'm thinking we do is that we start research. We're going to do front wing, and we're going to be putting this, this singular engineer onto this project here, which will kind of help us for next year. We will not have as harsh, you know, negatives. We'll gain a little bit of a positive too. And we'll have the engineer work on this for 78 days, which is a long time. But uh, it's just how we're going to have to do things. Board confidence check-in. The financial report, I don't think we need to worry about that. We have money. Car development. Um, this would be a nice one to actually have checked after we slapped on the underfloor. And we actually had a damage to chassis last race. That is correct. So let's just make one more. And... Uh, with that, I think we're ready to move forwards a little bit. Helipad has been updated, and again, updated, upgraded, and again, I think we'll just maximize it. It's perfectly okay to do so. 
guess it gives it will pay for itself in time. Race preview, Azerbaijan. We're gonna go ahead and uh, do some performance targets here. We're gonna go 15th or higher. One driver. Let's gamble with a five race here. I think we might be able to pull this off. Of course, that is solely relying on uh, G2. One driver should be doable. Fernando has been doing that. Finish position, one driver in top 15. Going to gamble on that as well. Again, Fernando has been doing pretty well. And in terms of our warehouse here, we can go look for the underfloors. And as you can see, this is a pretty sizable upgrade for us. It gives us 0.21 kph on just pure top speed. We gain uh, 0.16 on the RS top speed. And in general, it's just a good update in terms of cornering too. So let's slap that on for both our cars. In terms of analysis now, let's see how we do towards say, uh, who's our closest competitor? Baron? And now we are starting to eke out some more advantage here. How are we looking towards Alpine? We still are low speed, but we've actually moved up to 11th, 15th, 18th, 18th. But yeah, um, we're still lacking, but this car is better now. And if we play our cars right, we might be able to score some more points. Let's go to Baku. We had a great day at Baku. We ended 6th and 9th, uh, mostly due to the fact that we had a red flag on lap 1 again, like we had in Miami. And during that red flag, the AI all went on hards. We stayed on softs, which allowed us to climb the ranks. And then we had a couple of safety cars. The first one I didn't really do anything but bunch up the field, which actually helps us a bit. And the second one allowed us to pitch without losing position. And uh, that helped us maintain the advantage that we gained on the softs versus the AI's hards. So... Uh, that was very, very good, honestly. As you can see here, Red Bull 1 3, Ferrari 2 7, Mercedes 4, and uh, well, out. Russell crashed. Three cars actually crashed out Magnussen, Russell, and Ocon. Alfa Romeo 5th with Bottas and 8th with Show. And McLaren rounds at the points. We had both of our cars in the points, which is just amazing. Verstappen up into second place here. Alonso up into 8th. When you show up into 10th. And Vettel moves up three places with his first points of the season. Constructors, we have now moved up into sixth, which is not really what we want to do. We kind of want to stay where we are. Honestly, it is what we're happy with. So we'll have to see what we do here. I'm thinking that we switch over for... The sign will be your quickest way of gaining expertise. The sign with intense is just the quickest, hands down. So what I'm thinking is we switch over to research. We focus on our facilities. And we basically make a... You can nod, if you will, for Season 3. Uh, Vettel here actually scored... Well, they actually fixed this. Good. I didn't know that he had a close like this, but that's quite expensive for us, for him to score points. <laughs> we might not want to uh, do that very often. Uh, as it cut down our earnings to 2.7. We did gain a little bit extra here, but Vettel took that all the way. Uh, let's... Uh... That's a bit of a, of a sour one. So, yeah. Chassis has been manufactured. We're now back up to four. We're exceeding expectations, which is good to see. And uh, I think we're ready to continue. We have Canada in four days. We won't have anything in particular happening in the meantime, except for helipad being upgraded. And I think we're just going to go ahead and maximize that helipad because... It's weird to say this, but we are reliably in the points now with uh, one car and with that i think we're going to go q2 one driver just to be safe it also allows us to do this one safely and we're not going to go fast slap i don't think we can do that but uh these are looking good let's go to canada just finished the canadian grand prix as you can see red bull one with paris in seventh mercedes with a second and sixth place ferrari three four Alfa romeo fifth we have gasly in eighth for alpha tauri Haas was finally scoring points with Magnussen, McLaren in 10th with Ricciardo, and we ended up 13th and 18th. Battle actually crashed out on lap 53, as you can see here, and uh, retired. 
And Fernando Alonso ended up 13th due to me, well, putting my faith in uh, the weather forecast, but it was wrong. So I kept the both our drives out on wet tires far longer than I needed to, and I probably should just mirror the AI going intermediate. But uh, I didn't trust the AI knew what they were doing, and as a result, we uh, we paid for it. Driver championship here now. Bordas is up into six. Gasly is in eight. And uh, on that, no big changes. Leclerc is still holding on to the first place here. Verstappen is gaining, though. So we'll have to see how that plays out. And Constructors, Ferrari still has a decent lead. Red Bull is sat in second and, well, virtually twice the points of Mercedes. So starting to shape up like uh, how we can see the end here. Again, I'm a bit unsure what we want to do, because if we really want to, if we develop a car, we could potentially have Alonso winning a race here before the end of the season. It is actually a possibility. But I don't know if we want to slow things down, do research, or do design. Basically, do I want to power through and not upgrade my facilities, or do I want to sit back, upgrade the facilities a little bit, and play from there? I'm a bit uncertain. We made almost $200,000 extra, which is nice. And we're going to have to have a look here now on Vettel's car, because he did destroy his suspension, as you can see, among other things. So, uh, let's check car one, powertrain. The gearbox had been destroyed. This was basically a 90 plus before he crashed. This one was also around 90. Engine was about 80%, I think, so didn't take as big of a hit, but still, it is... Uh, it is not great, let's just say it like that. Uh, other than that, I think we are still good. Just double checking that everything is, uh, you know, put on the car. We should, however, probably manufacture a couple more front wings here. We only have two to go on. Two spares, if you will. And as I said, I'm a little bit unsure what we want to do. Because potentially we could pull through with the sign, or we could build for the future. That is basically the crossroads that we are currently standing on. I could develop uh, facilities for future, as I said. I could focus on something else. It's basically very, very difficult to uh, guess right now. Again, also we could go with trying to get our team hub up and running, trying to get our race sim up and running. Again, this is an important building. It helps level up your, uh, your drivers more efficiently, which makes it very important. Team up too, important, levels up your staff more efficiently. But what I'm thinking is, we go all in on car. And if we go all in on the sign this season, if I say hadn't, uh, hadn't done these two research projects and gone straight into the sign, we could probably challenge for a few race wins towards the end of the season. But what I'm thinking is, we build a car for next season. We do dominantly there. Again, I'm just testing. This is a testing save, basically. We'll maybe do a save later on with some more limitations on sliders, way to do things and so. But I, I am going back and forth a bit because I'm uncertain what would be more fun to do. That's generally it. I'm thinking what we do is probably keep one push loss for design. We do focus on research for this uh, year. And we get our facilities up and running for next year. Try not to score too good, if you will. And I think that would still be fun. We can do another save game where we go a little bit more aggressively, maybe. So let's upgrade our wind tunnel here. Should be okay. And I've now made the... Well, I have made the decision per se i'm thinking that we do go a little bit more into uh into playing for next season rather than this one although it would be fun going for this one we could probably do another like a one-off see if we can make as martin the uh, the champions over the course of a season that could be fun but uh i'm a bit unsure if uh that's the play we want to make for this one if you want any like long longevity Suspension has been designed. Very good. Front wing has also been designed. Sorry, manufactured, not designed. And we're going to manufacture four of these. 
we're gonna make a new project here could do underfloor we'll get new atr period in a day so as you can see the currently faded one if we do this we would gain already a huge boost so if we do this you can see how this underfloor would just become magical on our car what I'm thinking we do if we do this is that we go rushed. If we want to challenge for you know this season, we'll go rushed. But uh Yeah, and it's tempting. It's very tempting to just do it in one. But I'm thinking I am thinking of streaming the McLaren game. We might do that for that. But uh for this ATR period, we're gonna also wait until we get the facilities made, maybe. How long is it until the uh, CFD here is done? 18 days. So we can wait for the upgrade on the CFD before we do anything for uh, for the underfloor, if you will. So we're going to design or research a different part. I think we're going to design one. I think we design a chassis, maybe. And we do it like we usually do. We don't care for cooling right now. It can harm us because, again, cooling might be affecting, from what I've read, both engine wear, but also fuel usage. Lower cooling could lead to more fuel use, which is hard to test, honestly, so I don't know. I'm thinking we do a chassis, we do it in tents as we usually do, and after that is done, we can do an underfloor. We'll do it probably on intents again, and that'll be our underfloor ready for next season, basically. Gearbox in full condition? Well, that is due to, you know, you whacking into the wall. Um, Honestly, I don't know what I want to invest for this man. Still haven't checked what is the best investment, so let's just put two in medium for now. We have a point here for this man too, underfloor. And no points for our race engineers. Battle's contract ends soon. Uh... I guess we'll renew it towards the end of the season, probably. I guess it should be okay. Yeah, we'll we'll do that towards the end of the season. It should still be okay to do so. Well, renegotiating isn't a bad idea if we get rid of the uh, top 10 means money out my window thing. Red Wing research has been completed, so again, I'm thinking we do, as I said, we're going to focus uh, research this season. We're going to do, we're going to be making the signings a chassis, some side pull, some suspension, because it's just quicker doing that with intense design. And for the railing here, yeah, we already have some gains due to putting in, uh, putting in extra time, sorry, CFD time, so I'm thinking we just keep on Working rear wing, working uh, front wing to, uh, through this. And that should help us out a bit. We aren't gaining too much as you can see, it's just 4%. So, again, ma manufacturing them with intense is the quickest way. But this is a way for us to upgrade our facilities while also doing so. We could also try and get a higher, a higher result here. But everything has constant, constant drawbacks, and that is why I keep on doubting myself and going back and forth with myself like this. So, I should probably just have made the decision before the uh, before I started recording, before you know everything was uh, happening here, but uh, I didn't, and that is why I'm a little back and forth. But now that we're going to do research to the end of this part, or through the halfway point of the season, and then uh, I'd like to hear some suggestions. We might even just start over to try and do things more efficiently. But in general, side would be the way to go forward here. We're going to put one driving Q2. We're gonna go for one drive in top 15. And, and although that's very, you know, what's it called? Careful. We should still be okay with it. In terms of car development report, we are moving up in the wall, as you can see. So uh, that is that is good. But what I want to do here is see if uh, that suspension has been made. And it's been made for one of our cars. I'm thinking we slap this on Battle's car. You see, he's the one currently struggling a bit. And uh, with that, we're off to the British Grand Prix. 
Ferrari, 1-3. Good for them. 2-4 for Red Bull. 5-7 for uh, Mercedes is a bit disappointing. AlphaTauri with 6th. Alpine with 8th. Bottas 9th. AlphaTauri 10th as well. Which is actually good for us. It means they should be moving past us in the championship. Drivers. Russell moves up to 6th. Ocon up to 10th. Constructors. We have Alpine moving up as I said two places. Now we just need McLaren to score points and us not to score too many. In terms of development, same as usual. We have Hauke getting uh, getting his and the others getting theirs. Gained a little bit extra money this race, which is good to see. 1.1 million. 200,000 extra here. So, you know, 1.3 extra millions of money. Very good at our current stage. We're going to need 2030 to upgrade the design center once it's done. And I'm thinking that we actually do try and get the uh, renewal here on... Metal's contract. As you can see, he has a 14 million salary. How much did we offer Alonso? Five and a half million. Jesus. Metal does have quite the uh, quite the expensive salary, all things considered. I like to keep him around, but it's uh, just quite the quite the price here. So let's see if we if we up this to say 15 million a season. Give him a three season contract. Because we want to try and keep him again. I want to see if I can make the old guard uh you know one two in the championship of uh well not maybe next season, maybe the season after that, we'll have to see. Let's see how he feels about this. He has very high patience. And we might have to just pay him a lump sum here to make him uh, feel like this is okay. He's happy with this. Uh, he wants a longer contract. Okay. Let's try this. See how he feels about the four seasons. And we'll also try and give him, I guess, half a million. See how he feels about that. Because what I want to get rid of is that race target bonus top 10. Because next season, he's probably going to be in top 10 for most of the races. That would be an extra 30 million at the... Uh, Eh. Okay, so it actually costs us money to update this contract right now by 4 million. We can probably sign him again after the end of the season, and if not, then uh, we're just going to have to suffer then. We... The thing is, will our car be good enough that he will be in the top 10 towards the end of the, towards the, end of the season? Season, probably. But now that we'll take another thinker. So, Silverstone didn't go as we expected, but uh, nothing we could do about that. Race prep preview. And currently, in terms of development, this project is going to turn into under under floor design project. It just gives you more expertise, really. With uh, It's weird, really, because I didn't see the expertise being that high, I think, on the Williams save. So they might have done something that means now intense design with CFD and MFD it's even more powerful than what it used to be, which would be uh, insanity, really. Q2, one driver, one driver in top 15, should be doable. Fastest lap, we're not going to try for that one even. And with that, we're off to Austria. Hamilton wins. Uh, Leclerc and Sainz uh, for Ferrari, second and fourth. Alpine gets a podium with Ocon. Bottas fifth, we go sixth. Seventh for Mercedes, eight. And, well, that's it for Red Bull, really. Ninth for Stroll, for Alpine, 10th for Alpha Tauri. And with that, we have a couple of changes here. Ocon moves up in the championship against a bunch of points. Bottas, two, uh, moves up one in position. It is uh, equal now with uh, Russell and points. In terms of constructors, Alpine moves up past Alpha Tauri. We are kind of cementing our position here in seven, so it's a weird one. I want to get... <laughs> I enjoy racing, but at the same time we don't want to get too good of a result here, which is uh, which is a weird one. There's a balance here, uh, we earn a little bit extra money, which is uh, fairly decent. Here we are, first half of the season done. And honestly, if we really want to push for it, I think we could potentially push for, at the very least, fourth like we did with Williams, but probably third even. 
it's a bit too challenging to go for Wilder Season Victory. But uh, honestly, if we go all out, I think we could do it. We might do that on a, the McLaren stream that I'm planning. Just go all in on the sign and see what we do. But uh, we'll consider about that next time. I'm sorry that I've been so indecisive on whether we should research, whether we should design. But the thing that I'm thinking that is very, very simple here. The way that things look at the current stage of the game in 1.8 is that design with intense is still the winner. It will still it's still your best shot to just pull all the sliders to the right. Design with intense. And if you can put CFD and Mao hours into it too, it seems like the gains that you get in terms of expertise are bigger than they used to be. That could be because I played a lot of seasons on uh, Wilder Williams save, which could be confirmation bias for myself. But gaining 15% across the board of expertise um, from one underfloor does actually make sense in terms of development time. But it's still a huge gain. So if you want to challenge for, say, a victory, Season 1, the recipe for that right now is actually fairly simple. Just do an underfloor, put in all your CFD mal hours, and, uh, you know, start cooking. Once it's done cooking, you make another one. If you have CFD and mal, put them in. But rush this one because it will just be that much better than the current one and that should be uh probably the best recipe focus on your wings as well and you're good but yeah this will be the end of the first half um if you are curious about my other views i'll be writing a comment down below where you can see how what i'm thinking and probably a little bit later today i'll have a video up on the changes in 1.8 and what i think of them so far so thank you very much for watching please like and subscribe it helps me out a ton Thank you to everyone who's already done so, and I hope to see you again later. Bye-bye.